The future flagship of Turkey's Navy began sea trials late last month in a show of force that many analysts say could change the balance of power in the Aegean and eastern Mediterranean. The TCG Anadolu is a multi-purpose ship equipped with a landing dock that is expected to accommodate attack helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles. Spotted in the Sea of Marmara, the vessel underwent official sea trials and systems tests. The ministry in charge of its construction says the naval ship will be equipped with Turkish-made weapons, including attack helicopters and amphibious assault vehicles. But the most ambitious plans will be to equip the Anadolu TCG with Turkey's latest UAVs, the TB-3 Bayraktar drones. Its predecessor, the TB-2, has seen success in several battlefields across Libya, Syria, the Southern Caucasus and recently in Ukraine. The TCG Anadolu is part of Turkey's revamped naval strategy that looks to better secure its maritime borders. This past year, Turkey has seen rising tensions with Greece over exploration rights in the eastern Mediterranean and maritime disputes in the Aegean. And to discuss what capabilities the TCG Anadolu is expected to have, joining me now from Budapest is Zoltan Egerisi. He is an international security analyst and a research fellow at the Institute for Strategic and Defense Studies. Uh, Zoltan, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. The Turkish Navy's future light aircraft carrier, the TCG Anadolu, began official sea trials uh, late last month. How significant is this? Uh, it's really important for development of the Turkish naval forces uh, as uh, this is the first uh, this kind of uh, a naval vessel for the Turkish uh, uh, Navy, which will, of course, uh, increase its operational uh, opportunities and uh, room for maneuver in the adjacent regions, so in the Black Sea, in the Aegean Sea, and in the Mediterranean, and more importantly, uh, and it means that Turkey managed to reach or Turkey managed to reach a higher level of technical development, not just in other areas related to the military industry, as the Turkish uh, industries are really uh, right today uh, famous about, uh, uh, for example, about drones and other technical developments. But it, this kind of uh, technical uh, improvements. Uh, advancements reached the level of Navy, and right now it's enlarge Turkish room for maneuver in this region, especially if we take into consideration uh, the ongoing arms race between various uh, actors, especially in the eastern Mediterranean region. And by having this uh, light aircraft uh, carrier, Turkey will be able to uh, demonstrate its power capacity um, in a greater area. So by the end of this uh, year, the TCG Anadolu is expected to get more than uh, 30 combat drones drones like the TB-3, which is an upgraded version of the TB-2s, and attack helicopters, how will they contribute to the vessel's offensive air power? Uh, of course, uh, it will uh, be a really um, a highly influential uh, vessel for, the, for the, any uh, possible future uh, combat uh, in the region. Of course, uh, first of all, the attack helicopter will be really um, successful in handling uh, especially in uh, opportunities, uh, let's say, near shore, uh involvement in nearshore uh, conflicts like in any possibility for the uh, Mediterranean or in the Aegean seas. And of course, having uh, TB3 drones, which are uh, a new generation of drones uh, in the Turkish military industries, will even have a larger impact on Turkish uh, operability mm -hmm. uh, in not just in the, let's say, uh, adjacent region around the Turkish maritime areas, but in a much larger extent, having capabilities of keep in the these uh, drones for uh, one day in air, uh, which will be make Turkish forces more uh, able to, to get involved in any conflicts, not just in the eastern Mediterranean, but in uh, much larger areas. Yes. And it will really increase uh, the Turkish uh, influence, not just in the adjacent regions. So um, how has Turkey's exclusion from the F-35 uh, fighter jets program over its purchase of Russia's uh, S-400 missile systems pushed it to revisit uh, the TCG Anadolu's capabilities? Having this difficulty, uh, which seems to be uh, still frozen even despite the diplomatic, uh, diplomatic efforts of the Turkish side, 
um, directly this project to rather have, uh, let's say, local product mindset, which is, uh, let's say, the most important characteristic of the Turkish military industry's development during the last 20, 30 years. Uh, which means that Turkey has to produce everything related to every part of the military industry uh, and products related to the Turkish uh, army, which on the long run uh, will uh, make Turkey uh, more uh, self-provider uh, uh, mm -hmm. power in the in, in concerning the military industry, and on the even longer run will make Turkey a really important uh, arms or weapon exporter or around the world, as it, we could see in case of the drones. And having this difficulty will push Turkish industry to uh, develop its own uh, engine, its own uh, aircraft, and also to use this aircraft, uh, aircraft earlier with the really capable drones right now with the TB3. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure that in the future, as we have already plans in Turkey, we will have a higher or new generation of drones having even more uh, effective yes more complete so if this model proves a successful could it pave the way for other countries to convert them into drone capable ships yes it will be a really um, important uh, let's say flagship uh, project how uh, these uh, carriers will be uh, can be used and pretty sure i'm pretty sure that uh, due to the fact of the conflictless regions in all around the mediterranean in the upcoming future there is a high probability that uh, we will be able to see this uh, this vessel and these drones in action um, and at least uh, Turkey will have a really important force to demonstrate its capacity to get involved in various conflicts and it can uh, pave the way for a newer generation of uh, uh, this kind of uh, light uh, aircraft carriers and other states all around the world will be uh, open to follow the Turkish examples as we could see, uh, for example, in case of the Turkish drone industry. So, in the meantime, what do you make of uh, China's recent launch of its third and most technologically advanced aircraft carrier? Uh, what impact uh, will China's new uh, vessel, let's say, have on Asia's maritime security? Yeah, uh, by having uh, a new uh, generation uh, aircraft carrier for the Chinese uh, fleet, it of course increased its room for maneuver. As we know, we, uh, China has two uh, Soviet-based or Soviet-designed uh, aircraft carriers. Right now, uh, it's a new step that they have their own produced uh, aircraft carrier. However, uh, and it's a really important message to the other actors in the region, to Japan, of course, uh, in more importantly to Taiwan and for the United States. However, uh, as stemming from the Biden strategy, the United States, uh, States uh, is still investing and focusing in the Pacific region. And of course, it will enter in a new arms race with China. And if you look at the numbers, it's important to see that uh, the United States has more than um, 10 aircraft carriers, so the balance is still uh, favors uh, the United States. However, uh, techno a technological level and uh, with immense investment capacities, China is ready to compete and uh, behave as a competitor yes. uh, towards rival towards the United States. So how are countries adapting uh, to the uh, modern day security environment, especially at high seas and what kind of transformation they are going through to stave off imminent challenges and risks? Uh, I think the most important feature of recent developments is to invest in more in military industries and also to uh, increase uh, local military capacities. Uh, Turkey is one of the best examples um, in this field, but other states also try to follow that. And uh, it means that we are in a time of uh, arms race, as for example, in case of the NATO countries, uh, the United States are really pushing to increase the two percentage point GDP uh, spending for military. Uh, military uh, spending and uh, let's say landlocked states are also doing this uh, and uh, literal or sea states will also follow this or are, they are also ready to follow this uh, pattern or this push especially in the in the shadow of the war in the Ukrainian war uh, so by and large uh, big powers or states having bigger um, ambition to yes. play a global role or even regional uh, role in various uh, 
ocean uh, and seas will push to have a higher standard new generation of fleet and uh, drone capacities will play a really important role in the future in this world. All right, Sultan, uh, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.